the Free Your Energy podcast is back. And today we are talking about healing and why healing is the most important pillar of your journey. There are things that we focus on like finances, our family time, relationships, hobbies, goals, personal uh, ideas and dreams. And the question is, how do we how do we get there? How do we improve our relationships? How do we get out of debt? How do we save money? Uh, how do we invest our money? How do we invest our time? How do we eat better? How do we get better sleep? We all have different questions about how to improve our lives. Some of us want to heal from toxic relationships. Some of us want to heal from behaviors that our internal behaviors that we do and and some of us want to get away from horrible friends and find new friends every single person you know you me we all are on different journeys trying to figure out how to heal well to me in my personal opinion the most important thing in your life is healing if you want your finances if you want your gym if you want your personal life you want your friendships you want your relationships to go in the way you want them to go You have to focus on healing. We have a a, a culture, we have a country of people who are hurting. We are are all hurting. And so once we we focus on that healing and and heal deeply and for real, like actual healing, not just healing you post on the internet, but actual healing when we can actually say, damn, you know, I went through something tough, but, you know, I got through it. I got over it. I'm stronger from it. I recovered from that. I feel much better. I feel smarter. I feel wiser. I'm okay. Even if if it's a physical injury, you know, my shoulder was messed up, but you know, it feels a lot better now. I did the therapy. I did what I needed to do to heal. Once we heal, see, healing is strength. Once you heal yourself, you strengthen yourself, okay? And once we heal and we strengthen our life, everything in your life gets better once you heal. Part of the reason why your finances are not where you want them to be is because you've never healed yourself. Part of the reason why you keep creating the same relationship cycles over and over is because you have never healed yourself. Part of the reason why you are more overweight than you actually desire to be is because you haven't actually tried to truly heal yourself. Now, this message is coming with compassion for everyone because I understand we all have struggles and we all have journeys. But part of the reason we are not where we want to be is because we haven't healed ourselves. What we have to understand is a lot of us, are we have subconscious behaviors and patterns that we are repeating that are keeping us from actually creating and cultivating the life that we claim we deserve. I'll say that again. We have subconscious behaviors in patterns that we are repeating because we have never healed them and that is what is preventing us from creating the life that we deserve i'll give you a perfect example i haven't podcast for two months i haven't made the free your energy podcast for two months it is uh, october 26th this is going to drop tomorrow october 27th i got hurt on august 27th two months. I took two months off. I'm going to tell you what happened to me. I'm going to own up to what I did because it was my own doing. And I want you to learn from my mistakes. Now, we're about four minutes into this. So if you're watching this on uh, 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 Twitter or Instagram TV, I want you to jump over to YouTube right now because YouTube is going to have the full video. If you're listening on the actual podcast, you're good to go. Continue. Not one, not two, not three, not four, not five, not six, not seven, not eight. You think I'm LeBron James in 2010 making the decision? Nope. But nine days in a row, I worked out. Nine days in a row. Why? Because I like working out. Working out is my lifestyle. That's what I genuinely enjoy doing. I love hitting the gym. And particularly this time, I was actually traveling in between me working out. Okay? So I'm I'm painting the frame here. You got to follow me. I worked out nine days in a row. That means I was hitting the gym. I hiked a couple of days. Four of those days I was in Los Angeles. Two of those days I was in, I can't remember where I was in before that. And then two of the other days, uh, two, four, no, that's four, six, eight. 
Three of the days I was in Phoenix, two of the days I was somewhere else, four of the days I was in Los Angeles. Okay, I, if you check my math, that should be nine days. So here's what happened. I'm at the end of this trip, I'm in Los Angeles. If you guys remember in August, August 23rd is my birthday. So I was posting all about my birthday, I was happy, I'm doing good, life was going great. You remember those posts, if you follow me on Instagram. If you guys are brand new here, make sure you follow on Instagram and Twitter. Username is Sylvester McNutt. On YouTube, it's Sly McNutt. And um, so I'm happy. I'm like, yeah, my life is great. Everything is doing well. You guys remember this in August, at the end of August. Then August 27th, what happened? You didn't see any more videos from me. You didn't get any more podcasts from me. You stopped getting updates about my book. And now if you guys actually know me, the guys who know me in real life, you guys know Getting me on the phone from August 27th till today was basically impossible because I didn't want to talk on the phone. I didn't want to talk to anyone. Why? Because I had re-entered a depression. And when I'm in that mode, when I'm in that mode of when I'm feeling depressed, when my mental health is low, no one is getting me, okay? And this is what uh, I want people to understand. When you are low, when you're at your low point, you have to prioritize yourself everything else is still going to be there there's always going to be more work the kids are always going to have something to complain about they're always going to need homework your lover's always going to be there they're going to want you even if you're single somebody's always going to want you because somebody always wants everyone right the the work that we have the the lives that we have are abundant lives like there's always going to be more there's always going to be more people looking for your time and your attention and what I realized was once I got hurt, I needed to take away my availability to the outside world. And I need to really focus on like my core group, like only my core group of people can get uh, my attention. So that was like four people. Everyone else, I'm like, look, guys, you guys, I, you got to be outside of this because I have to focus on my healing because I'm in depression right now. And here's the reason why I am depressed. I will explain this to you so you can understand. I'm not depressed now. I'm good. I'm on the other end of it now. But from August 27th, that's when it got triggered. And I would say it's been, I would say the last three weeks I've been good. So I would say from August 27th to three weeks ago. All right. Today is October 27th. So you do the math and help me figure that out. So pretty much I think that's all of September and maybe the first week of October. Nine days in a row, I'm working out. So I woke up, um, so me and Daisy were in LA. We went to, uh, I woke up that morning, I ran a little bit, I think I ran two miles. And then we went to Runyon Canyon and hiked Runyon, Can Runyon Canyon, Runyon Canyon in Los Angeles. But it was like power hike, it was like power walk, right? Because the flight back to Arizona was at like <laughs> 9.15 or 9.40, something like that, it was an early flight. So I got up, got a run in, packed real quick, ran downstairs, got some coffee. Uh, I don't even know why I got the coffee because I don't, I'm not really a coffee drinker, but I think it was just one of those things. It's like, oh, it's morning and I got a lot of stuff to do. Let me just throw back a latte, right? We get in the Uber, boom, hit the hike, come back down, drink some water. I was trying to take some photos with my book at Running Canyon and I kept getting attacked by the, all these flies up there. Um, so that was like, I have PTSD right now from Runyon Canyon. <laughs> I can't even hike right now because it was like attack of the flies. You know, Sylvester McNutt trying to take book, pictures of book, but no, the flies won't let him. <laughs> it was super dramatic in my head, of course. Uh, Daisy was unbothered. She's just like, what's wrong with this guy? And I'm over here like, you know, when you fight the flies and you're like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. you guys on the podcast are like, damn, I should be watching this on YouTube. Yeah, so you can see me fight flies looking like a Kung Fu master. We come back down from the Runyon Canyon. We get in the Uber. I tell the Uber guy, I'm like, look, man, you got to take us back to the hotel. We got to run in, grab our bags, and then you, we got to shoot over to LAX. We can make it. He's like, okay, we can make it. So here's what happens. <laughs> so here's what happens. Uh, we do that. We get, in the, we get in the Uber. We get over. We get our bags. We come back. Boom. Okay. We catch the flight. We're running to the flight. Get on the flight. Now, what happens when you get on the flight? You know your body gets tight. 
you're sitting, your, your glutes get tight, chest gets tight, everything comes forward. If you know anything about fitness, if you know anything about the body and positioning, you understand that the sitting position, it makes your glute tight. It makes your hips tight. It, you roll your, your shoulders forward, especially if you're in a typing job or type, you know, so you're rolling forward. So now I'm sitting on the airplane, come back home to Phoenix. Uh, I think I unpacked, started working right away. So I work on the computer. I was working on my book. So again, uh, glutes tight, hips tight, shoulders just lean forward. And, you know, so now I'm typing, I'm working on my book. Then I go to the gym at like uh, maybe seven o'clock that night. Now I'm not subconsciously saying to myself, okay, I need to get this workout. I need to get this workout. Fitness is my lifestyle. Working out is my lifestyle. Working out is what I genuinely love to do. It's what I like to do with my time. So I went to the gym that day and I hadn't played basketball in like seven days. Basketball is one of my passions. So uh, I get next and I don't warm up properly. I think I just dribbled the ball thinking I'm Kyrie Irving. And I'm like, okay, I'm about to get out here uh, and play some full court basketball with these grown men. I get the ball, the, my game starts, okay? I get the ball, now I play point guard, shooting guard. I kind of play like, um, I will say, let, let me let me big up myself here. Now, you know I play like Kobe, man, come on, let's go. I, I'm, a, I'm a playmaker, I can shoot the mid range. My threes are okay, they're not excellent, but my mid range is pretty good. I can drive, I'm a good free throw shooter. I can also make that extra pass if I need to. And then I love playing defense. I love, you know, for guys like, man, I got this. I'm, yeah, yeah. I'm like, okay, I'll, I'll D you up. Let's play this defense. Let's go. So what ends up happening is the very first play of the game, the guy on my team gets the rebound. I, I spread out on the wing. I take off. I'm like, come on, give me the ball, give me the ball. I'm running. He outlets the ball to me. I got one defender in front of me. Here. Yeah. So you hit him with that from the left to right. Yeah, that's how you got to do it. You know, any of you, if you've never played basketball, yes, you do make these sounds when you actually play basketball. So I'm dribbling, da, 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 yeah, just like that. And that sound is also him like falling out of the frame when I crossed him, yeah, right? Then the ball's in my right hand now, dribble one more time. That's how the dribble sounds. Then I took a one, two, just like a, you know, to jump, left, right, go up. As soon as I go up, lay up. Easy, lay up, easy money. As soon as I go up for the easy money, I feel my whole muscle from my inside, like my groin to my knee. I just feel it go. Just, I was like, oh no. I land, I fall into the wall, I fall like this, and I'm just like, no, I've never torn a muscle and I knew instantly that that muscle was torn oh I tore the muscle oh mm, mm, mm. I tore the muscle I knew it as soon as it happened I knew that I tore the muscle and that that is what put me in depression when I tore my muscle because I could no longer move I hurt myself. I couldn't stand up on my own power. I had to get someone to help me. I had to, I tried to just, you know, I thought I could just walk it off because I think I'm Superman, but that's not the way it works. I was, I was powerless. My powers were taken away from me and I had to be carried, which is embarrassing, in the gym. It's LA Fitness, the full gym. I had to be carried. I couldn't walk. I couldn't move. I actually felt my right leg you know our bodies adapt when we are in pain our bodies adapt and I actually felt my right leg almost attach itself to my left leg because my left leg is strong and stable my right leg it couldn't do anything I couldn't put any pressure on my right leg so I actually felt my leg kind of just like shift over and hover next to the left leg it was man it was so painful and um first I went to the urgent care the urgent care said they're like oh well we can't help you of course because i'm not i'm not even going to get into the american health care system i'll just finish telling you the story how it happened first i went to the urgent care they said we can't help you you should go to the er now you know this was at night so there was you know how it is at night all the doctor's offices aren't available like your primary care they're not usually available 
So they said go to the ER. Now, if you've ever been to the ER, you already know this is about to be an expensive situation because as soon as you walk in the ER in America, they need that young money, baby. I go get in the ER. Uh, we wait about an hour. Um, of course, I go see the uh, nurses and they're like, okay, well, you know, we can't do anything if you tore your muscle. You just have to let that heal. Which I went on WebMD because <laughs> we all do that when we think we're dying. We go on WebMD and we're like, okay, am I actually going to die or am I being dramatic? And I looked it up. I said, okay, am I going to die right now? I tore my groin. <laughs> and WebMD was like, no, Sylvester, you're not going to die. You just tore your groin. You just need to sit down for a few weeks. You'll be fine. Essentially is what WebMD fine said. I'll be fine as long as I heal, take my healing serious, and I stop doing. It literally said you have to stop doing what made you get hurt, which, oh, my goodness. When I read that. I'm like, yo, this is what I'm talking about in my work. This is what I'm, I'm uh, preaching to people or, or trying to illustrate for people. Like, you have to stop doing what got you hurt. What got you hurt, you have to stop doing. If it is a person who is bringing you constant pain, you have to stop hanging out with them. You have to stop going back to them. You have to stop expecting them to change. If the job that you're at is causing you to get sick, it's time to consider getting a new job. There are jobs you can do that don't have you out here getting sick, hating life, hating people. You should not leave your job and be mad at the world. Now, understand, if you work with people, let's just call it what it is. There are some there are some shitty people out there in the world. I understand that. But I don't personally believe, maybe you do, I don't personally believe that all of the people we come across are going to be shitty people. And if you're leaving your job every day and you deal with nothing but shitty people and it's messing with your mental health and it's causing you to be jaded and to look at the world in a crazy way, it might be time to get a new career. Stop going back to things that have you hating yourself, hating your choices, hating the external world. We don't have to hate the external world. But in order for us to heal, we have to stop doing what hurt us. In order for us to heal, we have to stop doing what hurt us. In order for us to heal, we have to stop doing what hurt us. What hurt me was not allowing my body to rest. What hurt me was not caring about flexibility and mobility because I only cared about strength and performance. Those things are aesthetically pleasing and, and are easy to identify with the eye. Oh, that person is strong. You can make a muscle. Oh, they're strong. Flexibility is not something that is talked about openly in our culture. The only people I talk to talk about with flexibility are people who who have done yoga or play sports there's no common folk there's no civilian that that talks to me about stretching i don't know why i'm not going to run for politics but if i was i would make it so stretching was a part of all of our daily routines and i wouldn't say hey we need to legalize this and you better stretch or we're going to take your money i wouldn't do it that way I would try to do it. I remember Michelle Obama had like the Play 30 initiative, I believe is what it was called. And her whole angle was we want to get people outside for 30 minutes a day. We want to get uh, kids specifically. We want to get kids outside uh, 30 minutes a day. I would also uh, like if I ever ran for a politics because I believe the whole cult country needs it. Guys, we need to stretch. We need to stretch. We need to we need to care about mobility we can't just be uh, a strength it can't just be bench press and squats we need to care about mobility it, it matters especially uh once you're over the age of 27 <laughs> the flexibility you had it goes if you don't put value into it if you don't put value into it it goes away all right Excuse me for a second. I'm going to take a sip of my water and then I'm going to give you uh, four points to focus on for your healing. And then I'm going to let you guys go enjoy your beautiful Sunday, Monday, 
Tuesday, fun day, Wednesday, payday, whenever it is you listen to this, it's going to be a beautiful day to free your energy. Before I give you these four points, if there are any people listening who you believe you have a good story to tell on the Free Your Energy podcast, I want you to reach out to me, to me, Sylvester McNutt III, reach out to me. I would love to have some more guests on this season of the Free Your Energy podcast. I will be reaching out to a bunch of people. Here's what I'm looking for. It's not about followers to me. It's not about clout. It's not about any of that. You don't even have to have a social media account. What I care about is value. What I care about is bringing value to the listeners. And in this episode, obviously, we're talking about healing. We're doing it in an entertaining way because it's a it's a topic that isn't always talked about because it's it's tough, man. It's hard. And what I'm trying to do with the Free Your Energy podcast is bring in different stories and different ideas that ultimately will entertain, will potentially maybe could inspire, maybe could help shine some light on someone else's own journey. You know, and and, um, I think the key here is just to be vulnerable, to, to talk about your own journey, to be honest with yourself. So if you think you'd be a guest, a good guest, come on, man, come on. If you're especially if you're in Arizona, you, we could, you can meet me at the studio here. Um, we can chop it up beforehand and make sure to be a good fit. If you're in California, for sure, reach out. I'm always in California. I'm there at least uh, probably every month or two or every three months I'm in California. So for sure, reach out. If you're somewhere else, we can call in. There's so much technology these days. We can do maybe a face-to-face uh, on phone time, uh, not phone time, uh, FaceTime or Skype or something of that nature. So if you think you'd be a good guest on the Free Your Energy podcast and you got a story to tell, or you got some information to give us, come on. I created this platform for the listeners. It's not about me. It's not about you. It is about bringing value to others. Now, let me finish the story and let me give you these four tips on healing so you can continue to free your energy. I'm at the ER. They ended up giving me some pills and I just told the nurse, I said, look, bro, I'm, I don't want those pills. I don't, I don't want it. He said, well, it's going to make you feel a lot better tonight because the pain you're going to have. Woof. And I looked at him and I said, man, you know what? Give me the pills, bro. Give me the pills. And I was upset. I was upset with myself because I live in a state where we have medical marijuana. And I know that those pills are not good for you. I know that what they're giving you in the hospital is not good for you. But I didn't have access to my medical marijuana because the medical marijuana, it can it can soothe you. It can heal you. It can make you relax, can make your body relax. But I didn't have access to it. It was at my house and um, I'm at the hospital, so I'm just like, damn, give it to me. So he gave it to me. I went home and I smoked. Um, I smoked for like 20 minutes because I just needed to, I needed to like, I had so much anxiety flowing through me. I had so much pain. I was crying. Um, and this, this was the first time I cried the whole year. So I'm crying and I'm just like, man, I need to like relax. So. Um, and I could, I, I instantly felt the depression because I couldn't move. I had to be carried. Then by, when I got to the house, Daisy came to the house and she like helped me heal. Like she helped me get in the bed. I literally could not get in the bed. I literally could not get out of the bed. I was so weak. Now, like I've told you many times, I'm, I'm a former football player, track athlete. I personally feel like I'm a physically strong person. I feel like I'm a mentally strong person. So when I don't have my mental strength or when I don't have my physical strength, my mental health can suffer because of this internal thought of I am weak. And if you are a very, if you are similar to that, if you feel like you're a strong person or if you feel like, you know, you're strong physically, mentally, emotionally, however, and then you have these trials and tribulations that knock you off of your path of strength. And now you're having to deal with uh, your lack of preparation for these moments of when your strength is not visible or it's not present. What you have to remember is that these weak moments pass and that you might have the wrong perception of your strength. And that's what I had to realize. I thought I was so strong, but then this moment showed me that I wasn't focusing my strength on where it needed to be and that I was much weaker than I thought. And that was the that's what started my depression, but that's also what healed my depression and that's what fixed my depression because I knew like okay, 
you're not as strong as you think you are, and that's okay. You're not as smart as you think you are, and that's okay. Because now we're going to live in acceptance. We're going to accept that you're not as strong as you thought you are. You were. We're going to accept that you're not as wise because a wise person wouldn't have worked out nine days in a row like I did. Also, we're going to accept that the only thing you can do right now is focus on your healing. All that other stuff you were doing is gone out the window, sir. And I sat there and I reflected. I just sat on my bed and I'm just reflecting. And I'm just, of course, when, you know, these things happen, you're just like, damn, this sucks. My life sucks. I was doing so good. You know, all, all those um, victim mentality phrases. I said all of them. Man, why did this have to happen to me? I just had my birthday four days ago. I was flowing. I was about to sign up for a 5K race. Um, I was I was at 190, you know, I, I weighed 190. That's where I wanted to be. That's my my like my goal body weight because that shows me that I'm strong and uh, my body fat was low and I'm just like, oh man, I'm about to lose all of that. Sure enough, I did. I ended up getting up to 205. I gained 15 pounds. My 5K ain't no 5K, bruh. Ain't no, I'm not running a 5K because I couldn't run. I couldn't even walk. So there was no 5K. All I could do was eat. That's it. I didn't want to work on my book because my mental wasn't right. I didn't want to post a podcast. My mental wasn't right. I didn't want to talk on the phone about people's lives. My mental wasn't right. I didn't want to go to people's party. My mental wasn't right. I didn't want to be seen on the internet. My mental was not right. I didn't want to give to the world outside of me because my mental internally was not right. My mental health was suffering because of my mistake. So at that point in my life, the only thing I allowed myself to do was to focus on healing, to focus on letting go of what I could not control, to focus on what I could control. And do you know what happened? You do know what happened. What happened is I made a full recovery. What happened is I healed. What happened is I didn't do it on my own because we always think that when we are successful, we do it on our own. I did not do it on my own. I needed the help of my doctors. I needed the help of my chiropractor. I needed the help of medical marijuana. I needed the help of my friends and my loved ones who actually stood through me, stood right next to me during my tough time. I didn't do it on my own. And that's my first step that I want to give you towards healing. You have to understand that you may not be able to do it on your own. When you are down and out, when the world is against you and you want to heal, bounce back, get better and live the life that you deserve, you have to realize that you may not be able to do it on your own. And if you cannot do it on your own, that is OK. It is OK to say, help me. I need help. I can't do this on my own. Help me. You get rid of your ego when you do that. Help me. I can't do this on my own. Ask your friend. Ask a health professional, counselor, teacher. I, I don't, you know, on this podcast, we don't talk about religion and all of that because everyone has their own choice and I respect everyone's choices. So I'll just use this word, spirituality. If you have some type of spirit energy inside of you, whatever your spirituality situation is, ask for help. Ask your God, ask your universe, your atheist, ask yourself or whatever it is that you all individually believe in. Ask for help. That's step number one. Step number two, you have to identify what healing looks like for you. I'll give you a quick example. For me, when I got injured, that meant that I needed to ice for about three or four times a day, 20 minutes, elevated. And then once I got around to getting some of that inflammation and swelling down, I have a heating pad. I wrap my leg in the heating pad to heat the muscles. I would massage the muscles after the heating pad. And once I stopped moving around, I stopped playing basketball and stopped jumping, all I did was stretch. 
all I did was yoga. That's all I could do. And I couldn't even really do yoga fully. So all I did was yoga. So you have to determine what does healing look like for me in this moment? Now, obviously, I'm talking about something physical right now, but it may be something mental or it could. You never know. So ask yourself, what does healing look like for me in this moment? The next thing you have to do is you have to prioritize your healing as soon as you wake up. I'm so grateful that this injury happened to me because when I wake up now, I dedicate the first three to four hours of my day to me. I like to get up around six to seven, somewhere in there. If I can get up at 530, cool. If I get up at 730, cool. But between 6 and 7 a.m., that's like my ideal time. As soon as I get up, I'm dedicating to me, to healing. I write in my journal. Literally, you guys on YouTube will see this. I'll write in my journal. Um, I'll write thoughts to me. Because what has happened for me is being a, a writer who I share my work on public, I'm used to, okay, let me get a post up. Let me share something for other people. Let me give people what they need. But... The most important thing for me is to always write to myself in my journal. So now I get up and I write in my journal. If I'm really hungry, I'll eat breakfast or get a protein shake. Um, but mostly I go for a walk now, especially because the weather is a lot better in Arizona. The summer's gone now. I go for a walk. Every morning I go for a walk. I ride my bike. I'm not back to running my miles yet. Um, probably in about a month I'll be able to run my miles in the morning because I love running. I ride my bike, I go for a walk. Um, those things don't hurt my, my, my groin whatsoever. I've been doing that, especially since I've been able to heal. And then, um, you know, I'll go back to the gym and I'll take my time and I'll lift um, and I'll stretch. And then, now, that's the way I said that is not the order how it always happens in, but those are the things that I have to do for me. I need to do those things in the morning because those are all healing. For me, I have to write to myself. I have to either write what I'm going to do today, you know, write my plan or just write a few notes. Even if I don't write anything, I need to pick up my pen and my paper. It, it makes me feel good. It's a placebo. Um, and then, like I said, some type of breakfast situation, uh, a gym situation, whatever I'm doing, I'll figure it out. Uh, Monday through Friday, I, I pretty much go to the gym. Sunday and um, Saturday, I kind of just call it how I feel it and just this weekend I'm resting, you know, um, so there's that. The other thing is, so so for you guys, you got to uh, prioritize healing as soon as you wake up. Now, some of you may not be able to do that. So consider this. Consider slotting um, like a two-hour window in the middle of your day for your healing or slotting a cool down period at the end, of the end of the night for your healing. You have to figure out what works best for you. Now, you may not be able to do it every single day in the morning or every single day at night. You may be Monday through Thursday in the morning, Friday through Sunday at night. You just need to know, okay... What hour of my day is dedicated to my healing? And you have to, like I said, you have to determine what your healing is. Okay. Uh, the last two things I want you to do, and then I'm going to let you go because I think you guys had a lot of value out of this episode. I really hope you share it with someone if you do. Uh, leave a comment. Let me know. Um, if you guys are hearing on the podcast, shoot me an email. Shoot, shoot me an email. You can, you can use your voice too if you like. Um, Shoot me a DM, whatever. However you want to contact me, contact me. Let me know if you got value out of this. I hope you did. Here's the last two tips. Tell your support group about your healing. So going back to my example, I told my groin, I told the people closest to me, I said, hey, look, this is what I did. I was stupid. I'm owning up to it. Now, when I say I was stupid, I'm not saying that in like a self-loathing way. I'm not hating myself. I'm saying that in an honest way. So you got to make sure that when you talk about yourself, you know where you're coming from. If you're talking about yourself like you're an asshole, you know, it's not what we want to do. You want to talk about yourself in a more compassionate way. The truth is I was being stupid. I have no problem saying that I worked out nine days in a row. On most of those days, I worked out multiple times. That's stupid. With no healing, no stretching. My sleep schedule was super off too. And I was traveling in the airplane. That's stupid. That's just flat out stupid. A spade is a spade. I have no problem calling it what it is. So I told my support group, I'm like, hey, guys, I'm not going to be able to do this. I'm not going to be able to do this, but I would really appreciate if you could hold me accountable for this and that. And everyone was encouraging and they understood. It, right now, the last thing you want to do is you want to celebrate small victories. If you heard any episodes of the Free Your Energy podcast, you have heard me mention this before. 
one of the greatest ways to be successful is to celebrate your small victories. So when I could walk down the stairs by myself, that's a victory. Bring, bring a smile. Bring some happiness. When I could walk up the stairs by myself, that's another reason to smile. That's another reason to be happy because you better believe I had to crawl the first four days. When I was by myself, the first four days of my injury, I literally had to crawl like a baby. So as you go through your healing, celebrate your small victories, okay? This has been the first episode of the season two of the Free Your Energy podcast. I hope you can see now, if you've been watching, that I understand what I'm doing out here now. <laughs> the first season, I was trying to figure it out. I was trying to figure out my voice, what type of content I wanted to bring you guys. And I, I got it. So thank you for sticking with me. My name is Sylvester McNutt the third best-selling author of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight books. Most recently, the Free Your Energy book. This podcast is hosted by the Free Your Energy book. If you want me to keep making podcasts and you want to support invest in the books. I'm going to do my best not to uh, add on any commercials, any outside commercials. Just get the books. That's the way you can support me. The books are actually going to support you and your journey because they're an extension of that. They're the deepest thoughts that I have. And they're extensions of these thoughts on healing and self-love. And the Free Your Energy book specifically is my favorite book right now. I actually redid the cover. Uh, I don't think I've posted that on Instagram yet. Uh, or Twitter, or any of the other social medias, but I redid the cover. I wanted to make the cover kind of fit the two books before it, the Care Package and Lust for Life book. Plus my next book that's coming that I'm working on, I wanted to kind of, I wanted the covers to all kind of mesh together and flow together. So there's a new cover. My friends, thank you for tuning in to this episode of the Free Your Energy podcast. And make sure you tune in next Sunday. Or whenever you get time. It doesn't have to be Sunday. Hell, I might not even record Sunday because this is about, for me, it's about creating when I want to create. It's not creating because I'm locked to some schedule. I love to give it to you guys on Sunday, but, you know, life is in control, not me. I'm not in control. So if, if I'm able to come back next Sunday with another episode of the Free Your Energy podcast, I'll do that. Free Your Energy.